Hey everyone, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you all. Thanks again for being a part of this channel. You guys mean a lot for the channel. So first of all, before we get started, if you join the chat, please make sure to let me know if you can hear the sound right because I got this new microphone system. I don't even know if it's working, but this is my very first time going live with this microphone. So you guys let me know if you can hear me clearly because I don't want to be just talking and not knowing exactly whether the sound is going through or if you can hear me correctly all right so thanks again for being here and yes i'm just gonna get straight to it as you guys join the chat then we get to talk a little bit about this all right guys so if you come in here for the first time make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like the video and also share the video with a friend as well. So please let me know in the comment section down below if you can hear me right. Because this new microphone system, I'm not even sure. I'm not going to be able to tell if you can hear me or not unless if you say something in the, uh, in the description box. Uh, and again, please let me know where you're watching from so we can get this rolling, all right? So I'm here in my car. I'm actually pulling out of my parking spot because I got to drive somewhere and I figure we will talk about this stuff here, all right? So if you guys liking this video so far, don't forget to like the video as you join the chat and also remember to subscribe to the channel as well. So don't please let me keep going without letting me know in the comment section if you can hear me. Like I said, I got this new microphone system. I will not be able to tell if it's working properly and I'm going live through my cell phone. So I can't really uh, walk around my audio sound, my audio system or anything like that. So please let me know if you can hear me right or just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, so since nobody is not saying anything, I'm going to assume you guys can hear me right. So I'm gonna get this started. Okay guys, so there were steps in, oh, first of all, let me just put this out there. I'm be having issue with my eyes lately, so this is my sunglass, you know, um, eye visions, you know, you may say so, whatever. Um, I, I need to put this on because I, the sun is out and my eyes is killing me. My eyes is really killing me, so I do really appreciate you guys for understanding. I'm not trying to put this on to look cool by any means, but I'm just wearing this because it helps me. Uh, see better, uh, you know, because lately my eyes been burning and it really not a good feeling. It isn't really a good feeling. So thanks for understanding. Okay, guys. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and 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 you know just dive right into this. All right. So let's talk about how difficult it is to start a, to start a farm in Congo Kinshasa. All right. So you guys know. So behind the reason behind me, you know, of uh, uh, making these videos about farming in Kinshasa. It's more so to motivate and inspire some of you that might have similar ideas, especially if you are more into farming and you really want to get into this, maybe you might find this information valuable. So please remember that there are so many steps that you will need to take, but it isn't really anything difficult to get started at first. I'll give you my own personal example. So when I first started my farm, I didn't even need to physically be in a country to get started i was literally in the united states when i sent the money back home to my mom to purchase a farm for me and i wasn't there physically of course i scanned my my, my id my all oh, my, my 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 you know my, my passport all the information i scanned it through mom's email address so from there she was able to print everything out and then she went down there she basically did the transactions on her own she even signed for me but there was a spot that was reserved for my own signature since i'm the owner so it took another probably two years or maybe three before i took a trip you know to the country after my lunch was purchased so this is one of the things proving how easy it is to start a farm in Congo kinshasa meaning like you don't physically need to be there in order for you to start your farm and that was one of the things that i really find it to be so important and crucial when you are starting uh, farming in kinshasa so depending on how big or small you are willing to operate 
uh, I mean, basically, the decisions will all will come from your hand. It also depends on how much experience you may have in the field, or if you're just an entry-level farmer who are trying to figure things out. There are just tons of options out there. All right. So remember, if you purchasing a farm in a, with the purchasing your farmland with the purpose of just you know starting your farming activities in a small scale and grow and probably work your way up. So you have to outweigh your your options there, right? So there are some people who will purchase a farm land that is empty, which means nothing is planted on there. The, the, the land hasn't been used for any reason other than just being available, right? And then you go in there, you start planting trees, you start planting everything else. The cost of it might be lower because you're basically about to invest within the farm versus someone like me when i purchased i didn't really i didn't have anything available there so i planted my own trees and i started you know building things within my farm but what my farm costs when i first purchase it it's not going to cost the same now because of the investment that i've already put into the farmland because when i purchased the farm i didn't build a pig barn on there all right so the pig barn speaking of the pig barn if you guys you know, watch my video that I have uh, released lately, about a couple of days ago, I talked about the farm update. So you guys know if you've been watching this channel for a while, that I started my pig barn uh, projects, right? I started the projects about a couple of months ago. The projects is not yet complete, but it's almost there. So there's a reason why I stopped uh, the construction because of my own personal uh, uh, life. I had a lot of things going on at the time where uh when the, the project was supposed to be complete and i had to discontinue the, the projects and take care of my stuff here in the states and then now that everything is is you know it's cleared I'm, I'm ready to go now i am about to resume the projects which is this very week that we're in so stay tuned for these videos because they're going to come really soon into your screen all right so that's basically on uh, the first thing let's get back to the video right that's basically the first thing you have to take into account when you are starting uh your farming in Congo kinshasa so the very first one being that you don't necessarily have to be in the states especially if you don't live in a country you can still start a farm you can have somebody there physically to actually take all the steps for you as long as you send the money and they will as, as long as they know what they're doing you in good hands they will actually get you exactly what you need and that's in my case what exactly what my mom did right and then it took an, another like three maybe four years until i flew back to the country and i was able to sign the document the paperwork because my mom already had the paperwork in her hands so all i needed to do she had uh, temporarily uh, put her signature to just allow the farming activity to start and until I physically went there and I signed the paperwork and everything was ready to go, right? But I, my mom didn't need me to be there before we start anything. Keep in mind, when I had the the, uh, the, the land available uh, to us, we've already started doing things within the farm. My mom had already uh, planted uh, cassava, uh, you know, the yams or what we call pondu, right? And she also had planted among among the trees. She had planted a couple of other stuff, including corns, and you name it. Until I got to the country and I saw how massive the land was, and I, I almost freaked out. Right, I almost freaked out, and I still had to figure out what I really wanted to do with the farm. Until I was more interested in animal raising, and I got into pig farming. And again, I'm gonna be leaving links in all of these videos in the description, just in case you haven't seen this video, so you can go back and check them out. So it'll walk you through what when I, you know, when I first started and how everything came along and all that other stuff. So that's one of the things. So the second thing is, that you, of course, you're gonna to need to, you know, do all the paperwork requirements. Of course, before you start anything legitimately, you will have to have everything squared away by the local governments with the local authority because you can you may own a farm because you have purchased it through someone, but there are still other procedures that you need to follow through in order for your land to be more legitimate to use. I mean, you don't just want to go in there and start your activity out of excitement. Oh, I just got my new land without finishing the whole process, right? And then you go in there, you start your activities, and next thing you know, 
the agents walked in and shut you down because you didn't complete everything within the local authority office. So that's one thing that I highly recommend you, you do first when you are getting into this farming stuff. Because keep in mind, since the local government isn't really all that supportive of uh, small farmers, we do not get some type of financial funds uh, from the government to start any farming activities. So we're basically on our own with everything we do. So the government is really not going to care about what you do with your farmland because you are expected to do everything 100% on your own. Unless if you have some trustworthy investors that you have convinced on your own and you brought into the country from wherever part of the world you're from, and with their funds that's going to allow you to get the materials and machineries including tools that you need to actually accelerate your uh, farming activities but as far as someone like me i do not own any type of heavy equipment my, you know my machineries that will, will help me speed up the, my farming process until i have the the kind of money to afford this machinery i am going to continue to exploit my farmland um in a more traditional way which is literally hiring um whomever is willing to take the uh, the salary you have offered them and put in work for you to get the results that you are looking for all right so and that's the one of the things so let me just take the time to give a, a, a quick piece of advice to uh, a lot of new farmers out there or anyone who's willing to cons who's considering to uh, start farming in Congo. Do not expect to walk in there and just get rich overnight. That's not how it works. You need to put in more work. Especially people like us that, that are still in the, from the diaspora, we have a lot of challenges to overcome. Number one is that not physically being in a specific place to conduct your own activities, it makes a lot of things much more difficult to get things the way you want it done. But with good collaborators, with people that you trust to actually do things that you want done within your land, that could give you a peace of mind. But again, remember, people are not gonna care about your belonging as much as you would if you were there present. So that's one of the challenges that we face as diasporans who are investing back in the country. But if you make a six-figure salary or if you work online, maybe you have much more flexibilities as opposed to people like us who have to depend on my, my employer to give me x amount of uh, um, a day off you know a weeks off to go to the country and be there physically to see what's going on uh, with my farmland if you don't get that type of luxury you pretty much will have to be there full time to take care of your stuff otherwise it all it's, it's, it's all going to be chaos because remember whether it is family members that you are dealing with or it is just friends or just reliable collaborators there will there will always be some type of irregularities that you may not always agree with that's why it's very important that you are there physically to coordinate things the way you want it done because it's not that the people who are helping you take care of your stuff are doing something wrong it's maybe your style it's not the same style as theirs maybe the way you see things may not fit the way they see things you may want certain things done in a certain way and because you don't communicate that with them that could also cause issues those are one of the challenges that as diasporans who are doing business in the country face in a daily basis of doing business because you cannot always be there physically sometimes you have to be on the phone with them sometimes you have to rely on the video footage that they send you of your your land or whatever you got going on there right but keep this in mind it is very very important I do not know what you all of you guys do for a living but if there is any way you could take a trip every six months at least twice a year to go see what's happening that's really going to help you plus it's going to alert the people you are working with so that they know they should not they cannot screw up because they know you can show up at any time because some people they will just do things their own way they won't even care 
right? Because they know you're all the way on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. It's going to take you a couple hours on the airplane to be there. So they're just going to do whatever they want to do it, right? And because they feel like they have that type of freedom and they do not expect you to be there, that's why a lot of people end up getting screwed. They will start their business because there isn't some type of regulations or respect and they just end up going out of business or losing interest because the people that are working with them are not rendering the type of service to them as they would actually expect to you know as much from them right and those also could be very very challenging but i do believe if you really enhance your team efforts in uh, c communicating with them more thoroughly on your vision and at the same time by being there at the beginning of the project and and telling them what you are expecting from the project it's going to actually put both all of you on the same page and then while the activities are taking place activities are going even when you return to your respective country where you you know you have your career or where you have your family you have a peace of mind but do not get too comfortable with that either all i'm saying is for you to take the time to travel there back and forth to see what's up with that because remind you like i personally was supposed to fly back in the country uh this past august or maybe that you know september but because i i had been waiting for to hear i have been waiting to hear from uh this employer i have applied to almost two years ago and I, as I was getting ready to leave the country, I got pretty fortunate enough to hear from them. So now I was basically stuck and I had to wait to see what the outcomes will be. Uh, luckily, everything went as planned. Um, I will talk to you about that maybe on a different video. And that's one of the main reasons why I did not take a trip back to the country to uh, you know move forward with the projects because i really wanted to be there myself physically you know with to assist with the uh the pig barn projects because i wasn't in a country i wasn't i wasn't in the country when the project started but at least i wanted to be there when the project was getting complete right but unfortunately uh, things happened backward and i didn't expect things to happen the way they did now here i'm stuck because i gotta get started with the new job but i still have my people on the ground like i said the end of this week that we're going to resume with the big project when the big project comes back i am going to keep you guys updated on it and so we're going to expand very quickly because there are so many more things that uh for Lord. oh thank you thank you guys uh, thank you so much um mote mote naope ndeko uh thanks again for being here uh, and this really lets me know that you guys are very interested in this type of information that uh, I have to uh, to give to you through my, my YouTube channel here and this actually motivates and encourages me to continue to put out more videos like this uh, you know what I mean I don't really need a bigger audience all I need is people that trust what I have to say and people that share the same interest as I do because I believe farming is one of the the greatest sector of our country that we know we need to actually exploit and bring Congo to the eye of the war through this this is going to be difficult for people like us to do because of the limited funding that we have but with the will and the heart of agriculture I am pretty sure we're going to be able to put this country back onto the, the map so that there are countries out there who uh, underestimate out of us in certain way to actually be more alert of the things that we could do and, and with the potential our you know land have come on man there is so much more greatness that we can do that will surprise the world so let's let's hold hands together and we will be able to get this accomplished all right so let's get back to the video all right so um the, the process of starting a farm in in, in Congo, it's it, it is it, it is in real, very difficult. I mean, it the the the, diff, the most diff, the difficult part about starting farming in Congo is more individualistic than what people may think. Why do I think it's more individualistic? Well, 
because it takes someone's courage to start something. If you want to start farming, the decision will not come from somebody else. You may ask so many questions to people. You may uh, talk to people to kind of get an idea of what to expect from farming. But as long as the final decision hasn't been made from yourself yet, um, everything or every conversation, it's basically useless. The only person that gets to make the decision to start, to start farming is you but all of the options are being basically handed to you in a, uh, in a silver pla platter because the tools are there. The lands are available at a much cheaper prices uh, and you don't really have to spend crazy amount of money to start anything. So when you're starting from the scratch, you know you have to expect to spend a whole lot of money. But if you're not willing to start from the scratch, like I, I used this example earlier, someone like me, I'm about to complete my pig born. If somebody ever is interested in purchasing my farm just the way it is, guess what? You're probably going to end up paying maybe four times as much as you would if you were purchasing a farmland that is completely empty because I have invested a certain amount of money into my farm already. And that's not the end of it. Not that I have the intention of selling, but it's an example that I am giving to y'all so you get a whole a full picture of what i'm talking about because my idea it's not going only to be limited through the pig barn the pig barn is about to be complete and plus that is a temporary pig barn that pig barn only has a capacity of holding about a hundred pigs so far because i got all other projects on the way too so by next year i will i will be building a chicken shed then after building the chicken house i may probably have to build a much larger maybe three times as big as the pig barn that I'm about to complete right now because my goal is to expand animal raising within the farmland as much as possible as well as the crops because the crops I'm this is this is personal right with the crops I would not really actually invest more into crops in terms of commercial level crops will more likely be growing within the farmland to feed the animals. I won't be growing crops to sell onto the market for profits. I'll be growing crops within my farmland to feed the animals, right? Um, that's basically it, but like animal raising as well as the trees for, you know, of course, to maintain the, 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 the weather, I mean, to fight, to, to, you know, to fight the global warming, it's very important that's why i got a lot of bunch of trees planted and uh, you know very soon we're going to be planting more trees that are not available uh, within the farmland that's why we are going to do that right so that's why you have to expect more from that this is still the beginning of i mean this is still like the you know the beginning of uh you know the the journey i'm still at the very beginning so now i'm still investing the investment is still on the way because I'm nowhere near to start making profits off of the farming. But I am so excited to see all of this happening because I know the potential that this has in the future to benefit me as well as the people who are working in tandem, those working next to me. This could create a much greater opportunities to people who are invested into this very domain because people who are uh, actually watching over the farm all the ones who have been doing this for a very long time and they are very happy to do so and i really want people like them to be around because i cannot always expect people that do not know what they're doing to be around there because i will hire only those that know what they're doing and people who are actually going to help me achieve my goals because i'm not here to lose money i'm actually here to make more money therefore we are looking into maybe opening up an activity locally that would require me that would not always require me to send the money back to the country for like animal feeds and and things like that i'm still it's still a thought process it's something that i have been thinking about and i also have friends helping me out coming up with different ideas and together hopefully we're going to come up with something more concrete and that's going to help me uh, maybe eliminate some of the expenses that I have to go through 
uh, you know, as far as like animal feeds and, and, and many other different things. So the cost of starting a business, of starting farming in Congo, it's really very minimal. It's, it's very minimal. As of 2016, maybe no, as of 2018, when I had purchased my farmland, it only cost about a, about like between 600 and 800 dollars per hectare. So that's how much money I had to spend per hectare when I had purchased it. So the total when I had just gotten my my four hectares, I had spent around three thousand dollars, and then I had added two more hectares. So together I have six hectares. If I have to convert it to acres, for those of you that do not understand hectares well, on acres is about twenty five acres that I own, right? So together. The, the whole expenses amounted up to something around five thousand dollars altogether including the paperwork and everything else that's not nothing that's without any type of investment whatsoever because the trees and different plants that i have are growing on my farm that came after those are additional expenses after the farmland had already been acquired right and there is also there are more that's coming that's on the way including the the pig barn investment that i just pour money into and i'm only going to continue to expand to continue to build more animal places in there like i said like you know 2023 expects to be a bunch of chickens running around in my farm expects to see a bunch of goats running around in there because it will be a mixed farm i am not going to be raising pigs Pigs are like one of the most, uh, actually, I mean, I, I just love pigs so much, right? And growing up, like in my dad's farm, he had pigs. And then that, the first thing on my mind was pigs. I myself grew chicken as a child, as a kid. I was probably like 14, maybe like 13 or 14 years old when I first raised chicken. But when I did that back then, it was more so like to have you know, eggs for breakfast, but I wasn't really doing it in terms of business. Yes, I was selling chickens, you know, back then it was like, you know, five bucks per chicken that I was selling. But at the time, I didn't really think of it as a business because I still live with my parents and I didn't really know what to make of it until after I came to the United States and I started to see this different uh, opportunities, you know, in starting business in the country. And that's when I realized how much money I could have made if I had stuck with that but I do not blame myself for it because I was still a child back then because you know a lot of kids they do not see uh, how important it is to uh, get meals every day from their parents home until they are on their own without their parents then now they see how important it was to stick around with the parents and that's when all of these ideas started you know actually kicking in I'm like my dad actually was training me into this farming stuff at a much earlier age but I was so young to realize it until I reached a certain age when I became I started to become more independent then I saw the potential of what my parent my father was actually getting me into like you always always say there is nothing is too late it's not too late to start anything and here I am I just got my, I got my own farm I'm already committed to investing into my farm. Hey, hell, I could have put my money towards something totally different, all right? But I see how beneficial this could be in the future for me, for my family, or even friends, or anybody who's inspired to starting a farm. It could help a lot of people. And with, uh, you know, the starvation going around the world now, with all these wars, uh, breaking out and you know uh, from different countries and a shortage of food we need more farmers or even small farmers like us in the country doing these things to make food available on a lot of families table because if you don't do it nobody else can do it the chicken beckons everything else that you have for breakfast or everything else that you ever have for dinner right you are not appreciative of these things because uh, you just get up one morning, you go to the supermarket, and next thing you know, by the dinner time, the food is available. But you do not take into account, right, the, the, the level of or the, 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 the hard work that these farmers actually had to do 
for that so that the food is available on your table that's why some of you really have to support this type of uh, doing you have to support local farmers if you are one of them or actually are considering to get into this I wouldn't really sit around for another year because one of the things uh, uh, the mistakes that we're always making is procrastinating I know a lot of you out there are willing to start farming but the one thing holding you back is because oh I'm, I, I'm gonna do it next year but then when next year comes around uh, you come up with another excuse to push it back another year and after that year you want to push it back another year but guess what you're gonna keep uh, pushing it back until you realize that there are more people doing it but you are the only one left out and actually losing out on losing out on a lot of opportunities so that's what I'm, I'm letting y'all know that it's, it's never too late to start anything but do not wait too long either because the longer you wait the more you're going to lose not everybody was meant to be farmers but I'm, I'm pretty sure because I receive a lot of emails people reach out to me and asking me different questions about farming in Kinshasa the, the different things to expect or whatever and I always try to help them in the best of my ability as much as I possibly can you know the mad I mean the least I can do is to recommend somebody that I know that's on the ground who's going to help you uh, you know go through the, the right process and acquire your farmland and start your farming activity I mean I don't expect you to pay me any money I'll just do it out of good volition because if I start charging people money who am I to charge anybody money in terms of something I barely know what's going on there that's why you got to pay close you got to pay attention to no that buying buying places is really not it's 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 not difficult people get it twisted that's what I'm saying you got to be careful with who you were talking to you got to be careful with people who you were trying to uh, actually uh, socialize yourself with when it comes down to purchasing a farmland make sure you talk to the right people because there are a lot of people out there who are uh, you know opportunists who would just want to uh, rip you off and have you believe that they legit but in reality they just want to hustle a couple hundred dollars out of your pockets or even thousands of dollars out of your pockets and next thing you know you start thinking oh man I might not be able to start anything in the country because this whole thing is very expensive no it's not no it's not it really isn't all that expensive but yeah it could get expensive as you are building from the scratch like I mentioned there before um, you got to remember one thing like we're farming in a country where the government doesn't really care about local farmers like that much less small farmers they don't give they don't give a crap about us they expect you to figure it all out right and which also can um uh, give rise to gigantic amount of dollars poured into your projects because you don't have anybody backing you up financially i mean that's only going to be your challenge but as far as starting, I mean, you can start and take as much time as you possibly can, depending on how much money you make and how much money you are willing to put through your work, you know? And that's one thing, do not get it twisted. That's why everybody that ever comes to me, I am never gonna twist anybody's arms, but I am going to put you on the wrong path. It is up to you to decide whether you wanna take the path or no. I will give you someone's phone number and I'll be like, go talk to this individual. It's very reliable, it's, 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 it's serious. It's gonna point you to the right direction. And now it is up to you. If you have some type of trust issues in the past or with people you've done business with, but that doesn't mean everybody is ready to rip you off. I understand people might have had, went, you know, might have gone through bad experiences in the past that actually gave rise to more uh, trust issues which is understandable but keep in mind someone like me i will never put you into someone's hands who's who's going to cause even more harms to you and it's not like you're going to go and deposit money into that person's account and 
you know, sit around, wait for them to come and give you the updates. No, you're going to be there physically with that person. You go with them to different local offices and you do everything with them together. At the end, they hand you your land. You do whatever it is you want to do with your land. Nobody is not going to dictate what needs to be done in your land, right? So for me, it was very, it was very easy because my mom was dealing with everything. All I had to do was just send money directly to my mom. She do everything. If a paperwork comes out with the stamp on it, she would take a picture. She would send to me. Oh, I, I wish. I'm, I mean, if. If you had if you had spoken to me about that, I probably would have put you to a right direction. So if you don't mind, let me know in the comment below uh, of like where you purchased your land from. How much money did you spend? If you don't mind sharing that information with me and I am going to look into what the, the prices are on the markets right now. Like, listen, I don't even have to do this. I mean, this is not a part of my my, my video content. It's not even a part of it, but I find it to be noble to help uh, to help out people who are trying to do the exact same thing that I'm doing. Like I mentioned earlier, we want as many Congolese from the diaspora into agriculture as possible. That is my main goal in starting my, this this YouTube channel to talk about this specific topic because I want more of us to join the team and actually work together like the more farmers we have and start networking it's going to make our life much much easier because we would rather have more food than we can feed people than have shortage of food available on the market because most family depend depend on it is it possible to build while living abroad of course it is possible my, my dear that's exactly what i'm doing a lot of my view, my YouTube videos you guys see, except the ones that I was physically in the country, and I'm gonna leave links in those videos in the description box. You guys can go ahead and check them out. I got videos where like people send me footage, like my cameraman will go on my farm, film specific stuff that I want him to film, send it to me. Then through these uh, uh, videos, I am able to actually. Uh, you know, um, um, record myself and talk about specific topic depending on what the topic that I really want onto the video. Yes, when the pig barn project started, I was I did everything while I was here. Like my brother was there, my, my you know my, my friends are there. And they all are basically taking care of everything while I'm not even there. And like I said, stay tuned because I'm going to be publishing more videos when the barn is complete because the only thing remaining to complete the project is the roof they only got to put up the roof and that's all they need to do it is something that shouldn't take more than a week but like i said sometimes people want to you know uh, 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 slack off and they want to walk around and you know because they just they're trying to get paid more money but just roofing shouldn't really take that much money i mean it shouldn't really take that much time and I had spoken with my brother early this morning. He called me from over there because I was trying to get a hold of him on the phone for the past couple of days. His phone wasn't going through. And I called my mom's. I left, I left a message at my mom's house, right? And I called my other brother. I left a message at my brother too. So like this morning, when he went over my brother's house and my brother let him know that I wanted to talk to him. He called me. We spoke on the phone. So he's already in alert. So I'll be sending money this Friday to be more specific so let's just say maybe saturday they're gonna purchase you know uh, everything you know they need f to complete the uh, the roof and i would say the 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 earliest they start next week should be monday i mean we're talking about monday next week they should start the, the, the building and you sure as hell stay tuned because i will I'll, I'll share these videos with you yes it is possible to, you know, to build or start projects while you're not on the ground. However, however, what I will highly recommend is that you go there, at least take the first, maybe the first couple of trips. I would love you to be there like I did. You can go there when you're starting your building. Physically 
get them started, get the ball rolling and see how the project is going. So that way it makes it much easier for you to know what are the price prices on the market. So even when you return to your, uh, where you, wherever you stay, you have a peace of mind. You already know how much all of these materials cost on the market. So in the event you want to purchase something similar in the future, even if it's going to be a price hike, it's not going to be by like 30% or, or 40%. At least you know the prices on the market. It's very important. That's really going to help you save a lot of money, especially to, pr to protect yourself from you know, predatory demands with the intent to make you spend twice as much as what you need to complete your projects. Because one of the reasons that I always encourage people to physically go there, to be there physically, uh, to conduct everything while they're there is it kind of builds some type of discipline within people who are working with you. Knowing that you are there physically, it's very important uh, and, and it's a great deterrent, right? That's actually going to give them a check it's like we shouldn't be you know messing around because the owner is here present all right so that's that's one thing but you should consider doing that too and take take a trip stay for a couple of you know weeks or whatever then come back and then you can continue with them and you know a couple of months in between you can take a trip and see how things are going so that's my recommendations but people have different ways of doing things and people have different different collaborators so i have mine people got theirs so i can only share my own experience which is going to be different from everybody else all right so i saw somebody that asked a question so much is it hector so um like right now it all depends on the location of uh the the farm depending on where you want to purchase your your land the price is going to vary and the resources around your farm also determine the price of the land of course so like where i purchased my farm there is no water there available in order for me to have like 24 7 water i will have to build a borehole which is another project on my bucket list which is probably going to be complete next year but probably until maybe you know later on in june maybe after june all right so it's something that i am considering but there are also paddle wells not too far from the far land i mean from um from a farmland where my, my workers they actually ride a motorcycle down there they fetch water bring it onto the farm so now that the pig are going to be like permanently staying within the farm where the barn is getting built they're going to have to take the trips back and forth to bring water for the pigs because pigs like grow even faster when they're consuming more water so water is life so therefore i'm going to be spending a couple of extra thousand dollars in building a borehole for that that's why my farm it cost me about 700 around like 650 maybe 750 dollars pay one hectare when i first bought it but the prices now have increased this was back in 2018 so now it's 2022 so you are looking at approximately like a home between a hundred and thousand dollars in that area keep in mind no water available because it's not even near a river there are rivers far away but it's not like near the the farm that's another thing you should look at and keep in mind what if you are trying you buying a farm that's right next to a river the prices are expected to be a lot higher probably twice or even three times more than what i paid for mine so when i purchased mine i knew water wasn't available water was going to be an issue but only if we needed water we had to walk around to make things work temporarily until i come up with a, a you know a, a long-term solution which is to build a borehole and that's going to happen you know in a very near future so those are the things that you should take into consideration when you are looking into to purchase your land and yes that's uh that's one of the things so i don't know if there's there are any other questions in the comment section that i didn't go through so let me uh you know see what everybody is saying here to make sure i didn't miss anything 
on just bear with me here because I do not have any type of sophisticated software where I get to like just click here and I see everything on the screen. So I got to navigate everything through my cell phone here. So bear with me here if you just see me looking constantly through the screen because I'm trying to go back to the chat and see uh, what everybody has been saying about this so far. So let me see if I didn't miss anything. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm pretty sure I have covered everything so far, and I have answered most of the questions that I see on my screen here. I wasn't actually planning on you know having a very long live chat. It's it's been like over 45 minutes now since I went live. And again, thank you guys so much uh, for joining the chat. I really, really do appreciate you too for being here. Um, just, you know, make sure if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and remember to turn on the bell icon. So when I release videos like this, you get notified. And remember, the end of this week, we are going to resume the pig barn project. So the completion of this is estimated, you know, in a period of between maybe a week or maybe a couple of days but i'll keep you guys posted on it because i have my cameraman on the ground getting the footage and everything else so it looks like some more questions are keep coming through before i get out of here let me read all the uh the chat you know going crazy down here then maybe we'll get out of here your channel has been a massive revelation for me oh thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you again thanks so much thank you so much I'm, I'm very glad that the channel has been a revelation for you. So that really makes me feel good too. It means that I'm doing something good here and I'm going to keep it going too on um, with your support. It's like, listen, I'm not looking no money here. I make my own money. I mean, I'm comfortable enough to say I got a good job. I make a pretty decent amount of money. I don't need no contribution. I don't need no donation, but I wouldn't say no if somebody wants to help out. But I'm here doing everything very single-handedly. I'm able to do my own thing, no matter how long it takes. The only support that I'm looking from you is one that you hit that subscribe button and, and turn on the bell icon and liking my video and sharing my video. Those are the only supports you can give me. Those are the only love that I'm looking from you. I'm not looking for nobody's money. I don't need it. I got my own, all right? So thank you, thank you guys so much, so much again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I got here where I was supposed to be about like more than 15 minutes ago and I'm still here talking with you because I love hanging out with my people, all right? So until the next video, you guys stay tuned. I'll leave all the links in the description after I edit this video out and I'll see you in the next video. Again, thanks you guys so much for, for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Peace.